happening now. New developments in the implementation of the Alabama Accountability Act. A small group of private schools now opting into the program. Major headaches are just around the corner for Selma drivers. We'll explain coming up. Alabama politicians leaving their jobs will face restrictions as they move into the private sector. Just off the side of the road in the tiny community of Friendship, Alabama, you'll find a place called Ugly's Country Store and Ice Cream Shop. We'll take you inside and show you what they're serving up in this week's County Road 12 Report. Live, local, now. This is WSFA 12 News at 6. And we have new information you'll see only on 12 tonight. A list of private schools that have decided to participate in the new Alabama Accountability Act. Good evening, I'm Mark Bullock. And I'm Valerie Lawson. As the state works to make sure the law is implemented in time for the first day of school, some private schools are left with a big decision. Headmasters statewide trying to decide whether to open their doors to children from failing schools. WSFA 12 News reporter Melissa McKinney found out who's in and who's still wrestling with the idea. Oh, when an old country store near Georgiana went up for sale, two young ladies decided, hey, let's give it a try. Now the store looks a whole lot different. It has a new name that folks are asking a lot of questions about. Their ice cream shop and country store. It looks delicious. Happening right now, the World Championship Domino Tournament. It is underway in Andalusia, and there are players from all over coming in to compete. Now, folks from about a dozen states, we're told, are in Andalusia for this year's tournament, including the reigning World Championship champion who is back. He explains how he has won four of the last five tournaments. It's also a big claim to fame there for uh, Andalusia. Mm -hmm. You play dominoes? A world championship. You know what? I haven't played dominoes in a long time, but seeing the video, maybe maybe I'll get back into it. <laughs> okay. It's very relaxing. I don't play. I don't play. <laughs> well, to the weather now. Rich's new seven-day forecast does not have any excessively hot temperatures. That's some good news. Yeah, a little good news out there, but unfortunately, he's also tracking more rain chances. Your new forecast for the weekend is next. Live, local, now. This is WSFA 12 News at 10. One hour and counting until a partial government shutdown. And right now, the chances of avoiding it look bleak. Thanks for joining us. I'm Valerie Lawson. I'm Mark Bullock. We have special coverage of what's going on in Washington and what it will mean for us. This is a live picture from inside the Senate where Senator Harry Reid is speaking. The Senate has now rejected two spending bills from the House. Both of them tied government spending to Obamacare, something Democrats in the Senate have said they will not pass. House Republicans are trying to defund or at least delay the health care law. Joining us right now live from Capitol Hill with the very latest in the negotiations is NBC reporter Steve Handelsman. Steve. We also contacted Republican Representative Martha Roby of Montgomery about this negotiation failure in Washington. She says House Republicans don't want a government shutdown but do want to seize any opportunity to weaken the Affordable Care Act aka Obamacare. We'll let you know of any last minute deal if it happens during this newscast and be sure to tune in to Today in Alabama for the very latest beginning tomorrow tomorrow morning at 4.30. We also have an entire section on the possible shutdown right now on the homepage of WSFA.com. Live, local, now. This is WSFA 12 News at 10. Two stories breaking this hour. Shots ring out in two separate incidents, one in Montgomery, one in Prattville. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Mark Bullock. Valerie Lawson is off. We will start in Prattville, where two teenagers are dead. This is a live look at the scene. It's on Sycamore Drive. That is just off Highway 14. The police chief confirms for WSFA 12 News tonight two 19-year-olds, both male were found inside this home. We're told the parents of one of the victims returned to the house to find their son and a friend shot to death. It is still unclear what led up to this shooting. Police simply calling this a death investigation for now. They say autopsies will be the next step in that investigation.
The other shooting happened in Montgomery just a short time ago. In this case, there was one victim, and tonight he is in the hospital. He survived. This is video from Jeff Davis Avenue near Rosa Parks. You can see at least two bullet holes in that car. We don't know how many times the victim was actually hit. We do know his wounds are serious, but not life-threatening. No names have been released and no word of any arrests. Get updates on WSFA.com and tomorrow morning on Today in Alabama. Well, we all know about the extremely high interest rates often charged by title and payday loan operations, but an effort to limit the number of those businesses in Montgomery will have to wait. Anchor John O'Connor now with new information from tonight's city council meeting. And John, it sounds like some of these council members are at odds over this issue. All right, John, thank you. The Alabama Senate approved a bill putting new regulations on the payday loan industry during this past session, but the bill met with opposition and never passed the House. The city council Council did approve some changes tonight to the hours governing the city's entertainment districts. Those districts will now have closing times, meaning open containers will no longer be an option 24 hours a day. The times will be limited between 9 a.m. and midnight. That's the closing time. There are three entertainment districts in the city, two in Cloverdale and one in downtown. City officials say they're not closing businesses, just the district, and they're trying to limit late night public intoxication arrests and prevent under age drinking. Well, those colorful detergent pods make doing the laundry easier, but they've also proven dangerous for some children. Maybe you've heard kids are eating them as if they were candy. Tonight, what some manufacturers are doing about that. And it was a bold shoplifting attempt. Now it looks like Crime Stoppers is about to close this case thanks to you. Prattville police are closer to making an arrest thanks to you. Within two minutes of our Crime Stopper segment last night, officials got a tip identifying a suspect in a TJ Maxx theft case. Her name has not been released, but this woman you see here is accused of stealing baby clothes from that TJ Maxx store. And now that police know who she is, when she's arrested, she'll be charged, we're told, with robbery and theft of property. So for those people participating on the Dragon Boats, mm -hmm. getting a little wet may not be a bad thing on Saturday, huh? No, I've been out to Dragon Boat before the festival out there, and it has been hot, so who knows? Maybe that's a good thing for this year. It's getting to be very popular, isn't yeah, it? It is. It's a big event. It sure is. Thanks, Rich. You bet, buddy. Well, firefighters are working around the clock, trying to gain the upper hand on a raging wildfire in Idaho. And according to police, three teams Teenagers accused of gunning down a college student in cold blood did it because they were bored. A WSFA 12 News update. Three Oklahoma teenagers have now officially been charged as adults in the alleged murder of a college student. Obviously an emotional day in the courthouse there. Police say the suspect shot Christopher Lane, get this, out of boredom. Two of the teenagers are charged with first degree murder. The other is charged with accessory. Officials say one suspect, James Edwards Jr., took the arrest process as a joke. Well, on Facebook, investigators say they found postings from the teens referring to a second killing. No evidence, though, has been found proving that there was ever a second murder. Well, some positive news coming from our west. Firefighters are slowly gaining ground on that wildfire in Idaho. Crews have been able to establish a containment line in some key areas. About half of the more than 2,000 residents initially evacuated have been allowed to go home. Thousands of homes, though, remain in jeopardy. Officials say improved weather conditions have helped them make progress in containing the fire. 74 degrees gets us started at 7 o'clock, and that's Wake Up Weather. Happy Hump Day, everybody. Thanks for watching WSFA 12 News at 10. We'll see you tomorrow night. Well, the wait is over and the gates are open. Good evening, everyone. I'm Valerie Lawson. And I'm Mark Bullock at the 60th annual Alabama National Fair getting underway as we speak. The Ferris wheel is turning. You can smell hot dogs and pretzels in the air. And preparations are underway for shows and concerts that will go on all week. We'll talk a little bit more about what's coming up here at the fairgrounds in Montgomery in just a few minutes. For now, the latest news with Valerie. Val?
Welcome back to the Alabama National Fair. It's the 60th annual fair, so you know it's good if it's been going on that long. Something else that's really good is the fair food. Joining me now, Billy Fickling with McKinney uh, Food Service. Billy, you guys have been coming out here to the Montgomery Fair, you said, for how long? 18 years. Must do a pretty good business for yes, you. Yes, sir. We enjoy this fair. It's a great fair. You guys offer corn dogs, nachos, uh, what else? And Polish sausage. That's always a favorite. And yes. there's something new that you're promoting this year. Yeah, this year we're promoting the jalapeno cheddar cheese corn dog. It's uh, got a little spice in everybody's life, so we want everybody <laughs> to come out here and try one. Jalapeno, cheddar cheese, corn dog. I don't see how you could go wrong with that. Of course, we've also got the funnel cakes everybody loves. This year, believe it or not, there is a maple funnel cake with bacon bits and maple syrup on top. I'm not sure how good that is, but there's plenty to do and eat, Valerie, at the fair as usual. Listen, that is pancakes and bacon. <laughs> of course, that's got to be good. What is your car's most important safety feature? A lot of people would tell you it's your tires. If they're not good, you are just waiting for an accident to happen. But the old trick of using a penny to check your tri tire tread depth isn't good enough anymore. Nowadays, tire age is important. The 12 News Defenders have the information you need to know to keep you and your passengers safe. Um. It's not something we usually think about. The front ones are newer than the back ones. The age of our tires can make the difference between a safe driving experience and a disastrous one. A tire is like any other product. Over time, you know, it's going to deteriorate, it's going to wear out. Attorney Rick Morrison showed us a client's tire, which, when installed, looked brand new but it was actually 10 years old. And 72 hours later it failed, caused a rollover wreck. And a little girl that's 21 years old is now paralyzed. The problem, oxidation. Air, heat, and sunlight all cause the rubber in tires to break down, which is why car companies have new guidelines, suggesting that you never drive on tires older than six years. WSFA 12 News went undercover to check the age of tires for sale at local stores. None were past the six-year mark, but we did find tires as old as three years, meaning the moment it's installed, you've already lost three years of its life. And when it comes to our hidden camera investigation, remember many shops keep their tires in the back, out of the view of our cameras. You have a tire sometimes will sit for two or three years in a, in a shop, and it's three or four or five years before it's ever used. That's why it's important for you to check your tire's date of manufacture. So how do you know how old your tire is? Well, the manufacturers don't make it easy. You want to look for the DOT number. That's a series of numbers and letters on the outside of your car, but you're only concerned with the last four digits. On this car, it's 2011. That means this tire was manufactured in the 20th week of 2011. C4907. Yeah. We made sure everyone we talked with knew the formula. And then there's this long number. And then you look at these last four digits. And now we're showing you to keep your car and your precious cargo safe. Six years, replace the tire. It can look brand new. It can never have been used. Get it off the vehicle. So that is the rule, six years. Again, look for the DOT number. Keep in mind, if you don't see it, it may be on the other side of the tire. Here on this tire, you can see it right here, and the last four digits are 1808. That means this tire was manufactured the 18th week of 2008, so this tire is about five years old. We have placed all kinds of safety information for you online, tread depth, air pressure, that's all important too. For tips, just go to the 12 News Defenders page of WSFA.com.